Oh, God. <laughs> that was really, I don't know, that was really dumb. I didn't have to do that at all, but I feel good about it. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Staffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I'm showing you an ideal fall recipe. Be great for holidays, for Thanksgiving, any occasion at all. It is a really beautiful and simple apple tart. The source material for this recipe is a classic French apple tart. It's one of the first things I remember making in culinary school. And I remember making it thinking like, I don't feel like this is gonna be that good. And then I ate it and it was delicious and incredible and I take it home. I took it home and ate the whole thing. So a classic French apple tart has thin layers of apple layered over an apple compote baked on a simple tart crust, that's it. It is sort of perfect in every way. But of course, this particular recipe has, I think, like a little, some little extra steps and little extra ingredients and things to make it extra special. So ingredients. I have six apples. These are pink ladies. Just use whatever baking apple you like. Pink ladies are great. I also like honey crisp. Those are good ones. We're getting into apple season. So if you can find fresh ones, not cold storage apples that tend to be kind of dry. We have apple cider. This is unsweetened, unfiltered apple cider. Some dark brown sugar, demerara sugar, all-purpose flour just for rolling out the pastry, kosher salt, six tablespoons unsalted butter, one beaten egg for brushing the pastry, some apricot jam for glaze, and half of a vanilla bean. So this recipe uses the rough puff pastry and dessert person. Check out our episode where we show you how to make it. Puff pastry and apples are a match made in heaven, of course. You could also just use regular pie dough. So just one, one portion of that. Very little special equipment involved. It just takes a little bit of some prep. I have a potato masher. That's really helpful for making the compote. Pastry brush, you, need a, you know, obviously a vegetable peeler for the apples, um, and a couple of saucepans. That's it. We're gonna just, it's a free form tart. So you just bake it as a slab on a baking sheet. What is a compote? It's basically a cooked down, lightly sweetened fruit mixture. So like applesauce is technically, uh, type of compote. And we are making a, a much sort of richer, slightly sweeter, very thick applesauce, somewhere between applesauce and apple butter. I have two and a half cups of apple cider here and a quarter cup I'm gonna set aside for later. I have six tablespoons unsalted butter. I'm gonna do four in the saucepan. It's a half a stick. Set that aside for later. Am I doing this right? Hold on. Yes. Okay, so the dark brown sugar, it's not a lot of sugar because the natural sugars in the apples and in the apple cider concentrate and sweeten the mixture over time. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt, just a half teaspoon, and the vanilla. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm bringing together the ingredients for toffee, and I'm gonna cook it and make sort of a, a very quick toffee, and then I'm gonna use that to caramelize the apples and then I add the apple cider and cook it all down. So basically what I'm trying to do is develop all of these flavors that go really well with apple. So if you don't have a vanilla bean, and again, this is just half of a bean, you can just use extract. What I like to do is add a little bit of water to help get it going, and that just encourages the sugar to dissolve because sometimes when you make toffee, I've had problems where the mixture separates and you have the butter kind of sitting on top and then it's, it's ruined, you gotta start over. In this case, I'm not going as far as cooking it into candy, I'm just, boiling it all together and then adding the apples, but I think it's a helpful little trick. So I'm gonna set this over my stove, over like medium, and I wanna bring it to a boil, really try to get rid of the water, create some flavor, develop some really good caramel notes. And while that's happening, I'm going to peel and chop half of my apples, so three of the six apples. I'm gonna leave it there, I'll keep my eye on it. I have three pink ladies here. And here's how I prep apples. You probably caught this in our Tarte Tarte episode from way back. We'll just use the knife and trim off the very, very bottom and the very top. Not really necessary in this case because I'm just chopping everything, but 
I like to remove the peel close to the core and then take your peeler. You can either go straight down from tip to tail rotating or you can do like a like a slinky spiral horse's neck. What's it called? Horse's neck? Horse's tail? Horse's tail? You guys talking about? No? Like the, what's it called in, in a cocktail where you have like the long twist of lemon peel? It's called a horse's neck? Tail. One of those. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Well, apparently not. I'll look it up. Anyway, sometimes this, this to me is a little bit tedious, but then you get this nice long piece, whatever. But anyway, the point is peel your apples. Then in the recipe it says to core the apples, which you do want to do because you don't want to use the cores, but I don't really core it. I'll show you what I do. I just cut down along the one side of the core to remove a lobe of the apple flesh. By the way, this is, I can, he I can hear this bubbling. So I'm just gonna give it a little stir. Now toffee is a little bit different than caramel. Caramel is where you're melting sugar and bringing it up to the temperature at which it starts to take on color. Toffee is not the same. You can stir it basically. So rather than cutting the apple in half and scooping out the core and then chopping it, that is more work than you, than you need to do. What I like to do is cut down alongside one part of the core and remove a lobe of the apple flesh. You can see there's the core, here's my apple, and then I have a cut side and I lay it down and I just cut along the other three sides of the core. So sometimes you kind of don't cut in the right place and maybe you leave a little flesh on there or you maybe take a little seed with you, but generally speaking, you know, this is a very efficient way of cutting apples. And then this all gets mashed down. So like the dimensions of the apples really don't matter at all. I just give it a super rough chop. So the color has gotten a little bit darker and I can smell it. I really, I can tell that this is, it's doing the thing where the, the water is gone. So the bubbles are getting slower and thicker looking. So carefully add your apples. The next phase is to caramelize these apples. Now, how well they caramelize depends on a lot of things. Depends on the type of apple, the level of moisture in the apple, the freshness of the apple. So in some cases, especially with cold storage apples, you might actually get browning on your apples. In other cases, they're just gonna release liquid and not really caramelize, but either way, we just wanna cook this mixture for about eight to 10 minutes, and you're just looking for the toffee mixture and the juices to cook down and concentrate, and that's really it. Now, said that, is that correct? Reduced by, mm, no, hold on. Oh, until they're softened, right, okay. So you also want, you want the apples to be a little bit tender also. So we're just pre-cooking them sort of before we really start to let them break down. So these have a little bit of color on them. I'm gonna now add my apple cider and pour it slowly because this is very hot and it can sputter. We are going to bring this to a simmer and then you don't have to do anything. Just let it cook until the apple cider is reduced by about half. And in that time, the apples will soften and then is when, that's when we're going to like start to really mash and get it broken down into this coarse, sweetened, super flavorful compote. So this is a free form apple tart. You don't have to do it in a rectangle. That's just how I did it in the book. And I think it's easy because the rough puff pastry you chill it as a rectangle. So it's just easy to roll it out to that same shape. You could do it in a circle. You could do like individual ones. It's really up to you. I think this is rough puff pastry. I just like had randomly had it in my freezer. It might be pie dough. We'll, we'll see. Thwack it. I'm gonna thwack it. The thwacking is to help soften the dough without allowing it to warm up. So that just makes it more pliable. Okay, so I think I'm ready to roll. Let me give it a little more flour. Now if you're using a knife, cut straight down, as you see, 
I'm doing rather than dragging it through, unless you have like a super, super sharp knife and super cold pastry. If you have a sharp bench scraper, you could use that as well. Now this tart doesn't have a reinforced edge, meaning I'm not like building up, you know, a double layer to make a border. I'm gonna transfer the pastry to my rimmed baking sheet. And it's still nice and cold. Like it's really, um, I'm able to handle it, which is good. So fortunately it still feels nice and cold. If this is getting warm, then you are gonna wanna transfer this to your fridge and just let it chill out before you proceed. But this is looking good. Nice straight sides. Okay, you can dust off any excess flour if you have. And now I'm going to dock the pastry, meaning poke some holes. So I use a fork and I'm just poking holes all over, but leave a little bit of a border, leave about one inch all the way around. And this just prevents puffing action in the center of the tart that would like lift. Uh, although the weight of the compote helps to keep it down, but you're just docking it so that you have lift and separation around the edges and not in the center of the tart. Okay, then I'm gonna use my beaten egg to brush just around the border of the tart. You don't have to brush along the surface. We're leaving the border exposed. We're not putting any of the apples on it. And so I want that to get shiny and brown in the oven and this will help. Okay, so just like that. Very, very quick, easy application. And the last thing before I chill this uh, is just to add a little bit of raw sugar. You don't have to use demerara if you already have just, you know, like I don't have it, I wanna just use white granulated, that's fine. But just a little, a little bit around the borders. This creates shine, crunch, a little extra sweetness. It makes it really golden and sparkly, which looks pretty against the apples. Overall, there's not a lot of added sugar to this tart. There's the natural sugar from the apples and the apple cider. And there's the brown sugar in the compote, plus a little sweetness from the glaze, which is made from apricot preserves. That looks good. Looks like a Pop-Tart. It does. We're sort of making an open-faced Pop-Tart, if you think about it, which is just a turnover. All right, this is gonna go into the fridge. It's getting a little warm. I want it to just chill out until we assemble. Ooh, where am I gonna put you? My dream in life is to get a fridge at the cabin that has a drawer for a sheet tray. It sounds incredible. Okay. Returning to the compote, the apple cider has reduced by about half. And I can tell the apples are really soft because they've taken on kind of a translucent look, which is actually one of my favorite like states of apple being is translucent. So this is the point at which I'm gonna go in with my potato masher. If you don't have a potato masher, you could use like a large wooden spoon and kind of mash it against the side of the pot. This is a really useful tool. It's like weirdly useful in baking because you wanna mash a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna go in and break up the apples. I'm going for like a coarse applesauce texture. And I'm gonna let this continue to cook down. I'll come back and mash occasionally. And what I'm looking for is a very thick sort of like a word that we use to describe it as tight, a tight mixture with very little liquid. I want it to be a thick mixture that kind of holds its shape. And I'm gonna cut my remaining apples as this finishes. You don't wanna assemble the tart with hot compote. So I have a swap, so I'm doing everything simultaneously. But if you're making this at home, I would recommend doing this step ahead and you wanna let it cool down. What you don't wanna do is put hot compote on cold pastry. Then you are shooting yourself in the foot. But I'm gonna let this just sit here. I have my three remaining apples. What I like about this recipe is you don't have to peel these apples. I actually really like seeing the little ridge of red, you know, the little red stripe on each slice. And I think it helps give the tart a little definition, a little bit of color. So I'm doing that same slicing technique by going just down around the side of the core. So go ahead and separate all the lobes, remove all the flesh, get the cores out of there. If you slice with the thicker part of the blade, you're gonna get slices that stick because of all the friction. But if you slice with the tip of the blade, there's less drag and the slice will stay on your cutting board rather than on your knife. Because if it stays on your knife like this, then every time you have to take the slice off and do that. If it stays on the board, you can cut faster. Okay, so I'm just using a slicing motion and dragging it across the cutting board. And then I like to leave them actually in 
the little bundle of slices. I don't want to expose the surface area of the, of the flesh because then it can brown and it's easy to shingle. So we're going to basically, you know, fan them out and then just go in with all the lobes. Sometimes when I'm left with this piece where it's like going to be a really skinny slice, I just... So here's the compote. I just pulled it off the stove top. You can see that the color has deepened, so it's a little bit of a richer brown. And it's just a very thick, like there's no pooling liquid. It's just sort of apple solids. So you want about a cup and a half for assembling the tart. I probably have closer to two cups here. But that's okay, I'm actually just gonna pull out a second compote that I made last night that's already cold, and then we're gonna assemble the tart. And I actually make like a little glaze for the apples before they go into the oven. That just is a little bit of butter, so those remaining two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of the apple cider. And this prevents the apples from just really drying out and almost like dehydrating in the oven, which I don't want them to do. So I'm just gonna melt this together, and I have my pastry brush here. And then it gets glazed with a different glaze when it comes out. Okay. Just gonna melt that. Apples go here, let me grab my pastry. By the way, I preheated the oven to 425. I have a rack in the center. Here's that glaze mixture and my compote. So you can see that there's like still texture in it. It's what I would call a coarsely textured applesauce. And now I'm just going to spread this down the middle of the pastry. I would say you want a layer that's about a quarter inch thick of the apple compote. And leave that border. You have the egg wash sugared border as your guide. And I'm probably using about a cup and a half of the compote. If you're using the slightly smaller apples, that's gonna be closer to your yield. So I didn't weigh mine. Mine were definitely a little bit bigger. All right, so once you have that down, we're gonna put our sliced apples on top. And this part is totally free form. It's up to you. You can shingle them however you like. And I also recommend that you overlap them generously because the apples shrink dramatically in the oven. So it might look like you have a really thick layer and full coverage, but then you take it out of the oven and like you see the gaps in between. One of the reasons why I like to leave them in their little bundles is because then they become sort of natural clusters of apples when you go to put them over the compote. Depending on the size of your apples, you might find that you have a lot. You can always sort of tuck them into any gaps. I kind of like it when the directionality of the apples changes and you have them going like, you know, multiple ways. Isn't it pretty? All right, I'm really happy with this. It seems like a ton of apple, and it kind of is, but this will cook down. The last step before we put it in the oven is to give a little bit of a wash over these apples. Again, this just helps them from becoming leathery. So I like to give it a blast of hot air at the very beginning. That helps to initiate the puffing action with the pastry and just get it going, and then it gives a nice even bake through at 350. So this will take until I see a very nice dark golden brown Border, and the apples are browned in spots. 40 to 55 minutes. So I'm really glad that I put as many apples as I did because I feel like they kind of shrunk the perfect amount where you see, you see little peaking, like caramelly looking filling in between the apples and they're soft. It looks so, so good. See how beautiful the separation is along the crust edge. So flaky, you see all the the layers of dough and butter. So I have some apricot jam, and then I have two remaining tablespoons of apple cider. I'm gonna add that in. This is apricot preserves, so there's solid pieces. And I'm warming it up to liquefy so I can strain it. And then I just have this translucent, smooth glaze. This is the same technique that I did on our glazed pastry cream and fruit tart. Check out that episode. Apricot preserves is like an all-purpose glaze for any kind of tart. So you're not like boiling this, you're just warming it up until it's fluid so that you can pass it through a strainer. I have a strainer right here set over a bowl. So you want it liquid obviously to go through the strainer but also to be able to spread the glaze onto the apples and get like a, a mirror finish without brush strokes or any texture, you want it liquid. It also gives kind of a rosy hue. You know, it makes it kind of golden orange in the final tart. So the technique for glazing 
is to use a dabbing motion rather than a brushing motion. So that means you're placing the brush down and lifting up rather than dragging it across the surface. So it's a dab. It's more of like a gentle pressing and lifting. And don't feel like you have to use all of the glaze. You certainly don't have to. Anytime I have leftover glaze of this kind, I just stir it back into the jar. I feel like this is a very tonal tart. It's all different shades from like muted red through orange through brown. It is like every color of fall is on this tart, which I really love. Here's my tips for transferring something very wide and low profile like this. Grab either fish that, the widest spatula you have, and better yet, a bench scraper. <laughs> but I will just say, the only reason that I was able to do that is because it's really well baked and it's crispy across the bottom. What I like about this, or like one of the things, is it's like apple pizza. It's like super crisp, you can pick up a square. That's kind of my favorite kind of tart to eat, is one where it's like a good slice of pizza. It's still hot, so I actually think it's great to eat this warm. Maybe not as quite as hot as it is now, but I can't wait. There's beautiful browning all across the bottom. And that's one of the reasons why we want to really create a compote that's super thick, not a lot of liquid, that's going to enable us to get a well-baked tart all across the bottom without a lot of water. You don't want any like squidgy, wet, undercooked pastry. Mm. Looks so good. I'm gonna take a bite from the corner. Mm. I feel like the apple can be a little more done. But it's like the flavor is a celebration of apples. But the texture is everything. It has flaky, crisp pastry. It has firm apple slices plus soft apple compote plus like cooked apple texture in the compote itself. It is, I just don't know. I mean, I've probably said this before, but like I just don't know that there's another dessert that captures fall the way that this does. It is my ideal apple tart. You know, there's a little extra few extra steps here and there, but I think it really creates a superior apple tart, one that's so great for fall, and is also a reason to go to your farmer's market and explore different apple varieties, maybe try something you haven't tried before, because there's so many options. You know, there's a vast world of apples beyond the Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, and Red Delicious. So, I hope you try it sometime. It's a great Thanksgiving dessert. Thank you for watching Dessert Person, and we have more episodes to come, and like and subscribe. Cut.